Welcome to the Tips and Tricks for Sharewell Service Management video series brought to you by Beyond 20. I'm Guy Baker and I'll be your host for this series. Before we begin, please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button below. In this video, we will demonstrate how related item pickers work and how you can use them to, as a solution to a common use case scenario, how to use a single business object as the source for multiple related item pickers on the same form. We have a use case where we need to be able to select our customer account for an incident based on any of several different fields. We also have a customer account lookup table that is sourced by two or more external data sources. So once we select the customer account, we need a relationship created between the incident account and the account record in the source business object, not just the customer account lookup table. The solution for this use case is to use a related item picker for each account lookup field. Each picker will point to a unique record identifier field which is added to the incident object for each lookup field. These relationships in turn will auto-populate the additional fields on the incident that are required to establish the relationship to the source data objects. Now I know this sounds complicated, but we'll break this down into smaller parts to make it easy to understand and build. So before we continue, it's important to know a few things about related item pickers. The value that will be placed in the display field is the public ID. So if you look at control properties on a related item picker, it has a selector type, which is going to be a list of values, uh, then a relationship, which in our case we're using the Calvia account name, and then we have to store a display text. Well, this is going to be the primary or public identifier for the customer account lookup table. So we created a field in incident called primary key, and that's what will be placed as the display text field in each one of these related item pickers. The next thing you need to know is that each one of these related item pickers is going to be viewable or visible only when the underlying field is blank. So for account name, it's only visible when the network support ticket account name is empty. And in this case, we're, we're using a network support ticket in place of the incident. So when the account name is empty, we show the picker. However, when the picker is not visible, we have this field called account name, and it will only be visible when it's not empty. So the associated field value is not empty. And this is the same case for the phone number and the account name field. Now, the next thing you need to look at is the relationships. We built three different relationships, one for each one of the fields that we're going to populate from. So the account name field, that relationship is based on the customer account uh, tables rec ID being equal to the account name rec ID in our network support ticket. And it will auto pop the uh, account name field in network support ticket from the, our customer account lookup name. The same is true for the account number and account phone number. They will both be based on their respective uh, account rec ID, record ID, and they will still populate the account name field. Phone number, same way. It is based on the account or customer account lookup rec ID equal to the account phone rec ID, and it populates the network support ticket account name field from customer account lookup. And then to do the real magic, we go over into our business object and we look up our fields and we have account name, which is going to be validated on our customer account lookup table right here. And then when it changes, it's going to auto pop the account number, the phone number, and then the object IDs for our other source tables, which are, we're sourcing this from two sources right now, are actually three. We have a view called Polaris BCA, which is business contact accounts, and Polaris RCA, which is residential contact accounts. So those will have object IDs. They get populated when the account name changes from the customer account lookup table. And then we have one for Salesforce and it gets populated 
when the account names change changes from the uh, customer account lookup table. This allows a relationship directly to the source table to be created when you select the account, regardless of which one of the fields that you use to select it. All right, so let's next see this in action. So first we'll look up by account name. We have our River T Corporation and we press Enter and populated our phone number and our account number. It also populated our relationships to that uh, database in the background. Clear our values. Put in the account number. We'll do the same. And then we have a phone number for our one of our residential accounts. And it looks like uh, Ivan T. Sherwell has two different accounts, so we have to select the one we want. The top one is the correct one. Go ahead and populate that. So to review, we have the three different fields. They're all based on the customer account lookup table, which is sourced by three different uh, views in our shareable database. And then as soon as we select our account, it will, regardless of which field we used, it populates uh, the account name field, which then auto populates the relevant information to create our relationship back to our source data. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ShareWell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ShareWell development and administration.